Hey everybody, just like I did with determinants, I'm going to introduce you to inverses of matrices the same way. So I'm just going to show you how to find an inverse of a matrix, um, what the inverse looks like, how can you prove that it's an inverse, and then the next lesson I'll show you how you can use an inverse um, in working with matrices maybe to help solve a system. But today we're just going to talk about what is a inverse and what does it mean. So we have the identity matrix that we've already actually addressed in chapter three, section six. It's where you have a diagonal of ones, no matter the size of your matrix and everything else would be zeros. So there is your identity. Now, what does an identity do? An identity will, you have be able to multiply, like let's say you have a matrix A, if you multiply by the identity, that's the same as if you flip flop it. Usually matrix multiplication is not commutative, but it is with the identity matrix and it will just give you um, the original matrix. It's very similar to identity of multiplication. For example, like three times one is the same as one times three, which is just three. Um, but that's what we call the identity property of multiplication. This is the identity matrix. So here it is, uh, the proof of it. If you do, let's say you have a matrix A, so three, four, negative two. Let's see, I think I have a laser. There it is. Three, four, negative two, and five. If you multiply it by the identity like this, um, there's your matrix multiplication, which you've learned in previous lessons. You will see that you just get the original matrix back and vice versa. If you do the identity times the matrix, follow the steps that you've learned in previous lessons, you again get the original matrix. So that's what the identity matrix does, is it just kind of keeps its identity. Next, we need to show um, that these two are what we call mul multiplicative inverses. So matrix A is the multiplicative inverse of matrix B. In order for that to happen, when we multiply them together, we need to get the identity one at the end. So in order to prove this, in order to prove that something is the multiplicative inverse of another, we need to multiply them, use our skills for multiplying, and then we need to see that we should get the identity matrix, so the diagonal of ones. Okay, so we're going to start with A times B. We're just going to go back through what we've learned before. Um, and A times B is going to be, this one's 2 by 2, and this one's 2 by 2, so our, our canceling those out, we're going to get another 2 by 2. Let's go ahead, and I'll just do this slowly. We're going to do the top row, first column, and then I'll erase that and move on. So I do 1 times negative 9 plus 5 times 2. This is something that we've done in previous lessons. Now I'm going to do the bottom row and the first column. So I'll do negative 2 times negative 9 plus negative 9 times 2. And now I'm going to move this over a little bit for more room. I'm going to do the top and the second column, top row, second column. So 1 times negative 5 plus 5 times 1. And now we will do the same thing, but we're going to do it to the bottom row. So negative 2 times negative 5 plus negative 9 times 1. As long as I was very careful, hopefully we should get the identity at the end. So moving through this, this would be negative 9 plus 10, and that sure is 1. This would be negative 5 plus 5, and that would be 0. This would be positive 18 minus 18, and that would be 0. And this would be positive 10, uh, let's see, minus 9, good. And that would be our 1. And so we can see that we got the identity matrix out of that. And that proves that um, these two are what we call multiplicative inverses of each other. Now, if you did it again, if you wanted to do B times A, you would also get, just so you know, you would also get the identity. And um, <clears throat> if you wanted to do that, please feel free to pause the video and do that. But B times A would also give you the identity. So that is almost like a proof, if you think back to geometry, that is how we show that they are multiplicative inverses of each other. You have to provide this work to show that. All right, now, how in the world do you find a multiplicative inverse, right? So I've already, I've already told you how to prove they are multiplicative inverses of each other, but now how do you find, given an original one, what would its multiplicative inverse be? There are three ways to do this in everything that I've looked at. Um, the easiest way 
is, let's see what we're going to do using matrix multiplication. There are three ways, so I'm going to show you how to do it using matrix multiplication. Um, <clears throat> hopefully you like this way. If not, you can always look at OpenStax and find a different way. So here we go. Here's how you use matrix multiplication to find a multiplicative inverse. It's a lot of vocab. All right, here it goes. So we have A. We want to know what is B so that if we multiply A times B, we end up getting the identity. So we want so A dot B is the identity. All right, step one. You take A and you multiply it by B. But B is something we don't know. So when we don't know something, we give it variables like A, B, C, and D. When we do matrix multiplication, we're going to do top row, first column. So that's going to be 1 times A plus 2 times negative 2 times C. That's your top left. Now we're going to do bottom left. So that's going to be 2 times A minus 3 times C. Now we're going to do top and right. So it's going to be 1 times B minus 2 times D. Move this down. We're going to get 2 times B minus 3 times D or plus negative. So this is what has to be, if these are multiplicative inverses, this has to be your identity uh, matrix. So what we're going to do then is we're going to set that equal to what we know the identity matrix is. And herein lies what we need. <clears throat> We've learned in algebra class that if you have four variables, which we do, you need four equations, which we have. So we're going to write that 1a minus 2c needs to equal 1. We're going to write that 2a minus 3c needs to equal 0. And then we're going to do some stuff we learned back in Chapter 3. I'm going to multiply my top one by negative 2, and I'm going to multiply my bottom one by positive 1. In other words, I'm doing elimination. <clears throat> so it's going to be negative 2a plus 4c equals negative 2. This is from chapter 3. It's not even a matrix anymore. It's just a math problem. 2a, well, they're all math problems, but you know what I mean, hopefully. And I'm going to go ahead and get a value for c. So it's going to be 1c equals negative 2, and c is negative 2. So I have found what c needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and change that color, change the size a little bit. I'm going to go over here, and every time I see a c, it's going to be negative 2. All right, so C is negative 2. Let's go ahead and find A. We have enough information now that we can find A. So I'm going to draw like, um, zoom in right here. And what's the easiest equation? This is all from Chapter 3 using some elimination. It all comes into play. I'm going to use my top equation, which was the easiest equation in my opinion, and plug in negative 2 for C. So that's going to be 1A. I'll change that. That's going to be 1A. Take away 2 times negative 2 equals 1. That's 1a plus 4 equals 1. That's a equal negative 3. So I'm going to change my color and change my sign. And anytime I see an a, I'm going to make it a negative 3. And you can see we're kind of on our way to finishing up this uh, multiplicative, multiplicative inverse matrix. All right, we're going to do the same thing now, but we're going to do it with um, the second two equations. So let's see, I'm going to change back to red, and I'm going to use these two, and I'm going to set it equal to this information over here. Okay, so I know that 1B minus, let's change the size, I know that 1B minus 2D has to equal 0, and 2B minus 3D has to equal 1. Now, what you probably need to be recognizing is how spot on your algebra skills need to be at this point. Every single minus and every single positive makes a huge difference. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the top by negative 2 and the bottom by 1. That's going, again, I'm using elimination to solve. I have two variables, two problems. 
negative 2b plus 4d equals 0, and 2b minus 3d equals 1. So we're using our um, Algebra 1 skills here to solve. Cancel, cancel. 1d equals 1. d is 1. So I'm going to go back to my matrix, change to blue, and I can put down that d is 1. So we're almost there. We just have to solve for b now. So I'll go back to red. And I'm going to pick the easiest equation that I was just working with, maybe the top one, is my opinion. I'll duplicate it. I'll put it in the exact same position I did up above. And I'm going to replace D with 1. So it's going to be 1B, take away 2 times 1 equals 0. 1B minus 2 equals 0. And 1B equals 2. And the 1 is not needed. So I'm going to change back to blue. I have solved for B after plugging in D and B is 2. And that is how you find the multiplicative inverse of a matrix. So we would finish by saying that B must be negative 3, 2, negative 2, and 1.